Hello, everyone. Thank you for stopping by our poster session. My name is Aleksandra Spatek, and I work at Ada Mickiewicz University in Poznań, Poland, and together with Shelley Staples from University of Arizona and Bradley Derger from Purdue University, we would like to talk to you about our project, the Corpus and Repository of Writing. And specifically, we are going to talk to you about how we ethically compile and analyze student data. If you are interested in learning more about our project, you can go to writecrow.org and read more about it. And what is Crow? Crow is the corpus and repository of writing, and it's hosted on a web-based platform developed using common web frameworks. Anyone who is interested can request access to this platform. Crow has also been used for research. It provides diverse data sets to examine student writing and classroom-based instruction using Corpus tools. Crow has also been used for professional development. It's a platform for writing instructors to share their work with others. And by work, we mean here pedagogical materials such as syllabi, PowerPoints, assignments, and assignment sequences. And Crow has also been used for mentoring because mentors can use this archive of sample learner uh, writing and assignments, and they can share this with new instructors. It can be used in training, it could be used for discussion and just professional development through mentoring. Crow has also been used for assessment purposes. It supports implementation of common assignment outcomes across over 100 sections of first year writing. And last but not least, Crow has been designed with sustainability in mind. From day one, we embedded sustainable practices in project decision making, development, research design, and team building. Okay, let's move on now to talk about the data set in Crow. First thing you should know about Crow and the corpus is that it's actually a learner corpus. This means it's a collection of texts written by students, and typically these are undergraduate students who are still developing as academic writers, and also texts by other learners, such as English language learners. It represents over 38 writing genres. There's over 17,000 texts and over 17 million words in our corpus right now. And what is also important is that uh, each text is tagged with metadata. You can select texts based on writers' first and second language, their major, their year in school, country of origin, the course that they were taking when they were writing this particular paper, or the institution they were attending. So there's lots of different options to choose from. On the other hand, we have the repository of diverse pedagogical artifacts. So what you can find in there is such items as syllabi, assignment sheets, assessment rubrics, activity sheets. And right now there's over 500 items in the repository. And what's quite interesting is that some of these items in repository are linked to the items in the corpus. So you can look at an assignment prompt and see if there are any um, text in the corpus that are linked to that prompt and they were written in response to that particular prompt. Here's a screenshot that shows the web interface for Crow, specifically the search function. You can see the list of metadata filters at the left. Search results are displayed here using the keywords in context approach familiar to corpus linguistics researchers. Results for each search term are centered, bracketed by the text that immediately precedes and follows. To ensure the text in Crow aren't a target for unethical reuse, we require permission to use Crow. Prospective users provide contact information and a summary of their research and teaching needs. If approved, they are granted one of four levels of access. Standard access displays only excerpts of texts. Full access allows researchers to see entire texts. Export allows search result data to be shared. Finally, offline access allows researchers to download a curated subset of the Crow corpus for use with advanced corpus tools. No commercial use is allowed. All of the texts in Crow are de-identified rigorously and used with the permission of the authors. Two of our institutions, Purdue and Northern Arizona, allow the students of participating instructors to opt out. At Arizona, students provide permission directly. 
Grants have enabled us to provide incentives for some students and instructors participating at the University of Arizona. In this slide, you can see what viewing a typical text looks like. This is the standard access level, limited to viewing excerpts of texts. The identification number for the text is shown at the top, and then the text itself appears on the screen. In the full access level, the entire text is displayed. So we wanted to share just really briefly um, a sample study, a little snippet, um, and discuss some methodological choices we made. So first of all, um, the context that we're working in, first year writing, often at universities in the US, um, these are designed to respond to the needs of various populations. So for example, they might have courses that are intended for multilingual writers from outside the US, um, and then other courses that are intended for both multilingual and uh, monolingual writers predominantly from the US. Um, but anyone can join either course. Um, so it's really the student's choice of what is the community of practice they want to be a part of. Um, and so for the courses that we're comparing across these two contexts, uh, course two and three here, um, they have similar learning outcomes and assignments. So the point here is really um, thinking about whether your data is well matched when you're trying to answer some kind of question um, about compare that compares, which is often what we're doing with this type of data. Um, and, you know, sort of thinking about the broader question that we're trying to answer is if the design of these courses impacts the outcomes. So one way to measure outcomes is to look at the language used um, by the writers in these assignments. And here we have a very small snippet of prepositional phrases. Um, so the figure shows um, the means and confidence intervals. Those are the bars. Um, and the confidence intervals just kind of show you whether there are meaningful differences between these two groups. So you can see there are some um, between uh, the levels. So there, there are differences. It's going up um, across these course levels. Uh, but there's really not much of a difference between the two groups of writers at the um, same level. Uh, so, and you can see some um, examples of this feature of the prepositional phrases in some student text just to kind of show you what this looks like. Basically, this is one of the building blocks of highly informational text and there's been research that shows that as students um, advance or as academic writers advance, um, they use more of these features in their writing. So um, the results here are important because we think <laughs> because it does show this development. So that's good for assessment purposes, for showing that there is something happening in this co these courses, but also that the development is stable across these two groups. Um, so this can you know lead to support uh, that these uh, courses are equivalent. Um, they're set up as equivalent in terms of learning outcomes and assignments. Here we have some evidence that the outcomes are similar as well. Um, and then this just allows students to more confidently choose uh, the course that they want to join uh, without fear of uh, people perceiving it as being less challenging, which often does happen, unfortunately, with um, the sections that are designed for multilingual writers from outside the U.S. Thank you for listening. We'd love to hear from you. Visit writecrow.org to contact us. If you are able to attend the poster session, we look forward to your questions and comments.